Hello, what's up YouTube photographer Ronix Sweet and I try in this tutorial we are going to be learning about frequency separation from the very start to the very end. So we want to understand how we can easily retain the shape of the model's face and also how to retain original skin texture in the image every single time we are touching using frequency separation. So you can see a quick before and after for this very image and this image was taken by Godwin Visuals Pixels and I'm going to link his Instagram the description of this video so you can check out his instagram maybe you can get access to this profile so you can see before and after so like i said you're going to be learning about frequency separation from the very start to the very end in the shortest time possible so what you have to understand about frequency separation it divides the image into the high frequency layer and the low frequency layer in the high frequency layer usually we have the textures and in the low frequency layer usually we have our colors so we want to create those two layers by pressing Ctrl or Command J on the keyboard twice and you're going to name this into double clicking right there, low frequency and you're going to name this into high frequency. So after doing this, we're going now to come and select the low frequency layer and remember we only want to retain the colors in the low frequency layer. So select the low frequency layer and hide the high frequency layer by clicking on the eye icon right here. Then you're going to come to filter and you're going to come to blur and come down to gush and blur. So at this point we have to determine the amount of skin textures that we want to remain with in the final image. So this is the most important point for frequency separation. So you have to look for the area that has more or prominent skin textures than the rest of the image. So I'm just going to be using the forehead as a reference point. So you have to check the radius up, up the point when you're just starting to lose out on the skin textures in the image. But you can still notice the facial structures. So just come and left click and drag up the radius up the point when you're just starting to lose out on the details. So at around 4, that is when I'm just starting to lose out on the details. So you shouldn't cram this radius because your images may be having a varying texture or may have been taken using a different camera from this one. And the details may be different, meaning your radius is not going to be the same like the one I've used right here. Just come and click OK. And next thing that we want to do, we are going to select the high frequency layer. And in the high frequency layer, I usually want to remain with the colors. So you can see when we blur the image, it is only having our colors. And in the high frequency, I only want to remain with the textures. So we're just going to come to the high frequency and now activate it by clicking on the eye icon. Then you're going to come to image and going to come down to apply image. So when you come to apply image, you're going to come. And make sure the layer that we select is the low frequency layer. And now the channel is RGB. So if at all you have a 16-bit image like the one I'm using in this tutorial, you have to come and make sure you change the blend mode to add. Or pass at 100%. Preserve transparency and mask cannot check. The scale is 2 and offset 2. And make sure you turn on the invert option. And you'll see the texture of the image on this square kind of layer. So if at all you have an 8-bit image right here, or if at all you have 8 right here, make sure the blend mode that you use is subtract and make sure you have selected the low frequency layer, the channel is RGB and make sure the invert option is not turned on. The opacity is at 100%, preserve transparency and mask are not checked right here. The scale is 2 and this time around the offset is 128. So like I said, I have a 16-bit image so I'm just going to be using a blend mode of add pass at 100%, the scale is 2 offset 0 and I'm going to turn on the invert option. So I want the details to be revealed back in the image and the blend mode that is going to take away the gray color from the image is going to be linear light. So just come to the blend mode and change it from normal and change it to linear light and you'll get back the image that it was meant to be. So right now we're going to put these two in a group by pressing Ctrl or Command and left clicking on both layers and pressing Ctrl or Command G on the keyboard or you can easily drag them to this folder icon to put them in a group. And you can double click on the name to rename that to frequency separation. Like I said, there shouldn't be a difference between the separated image and the original background image. You can see, if at all I'm trying this, you can see that we have the same image in this case. So right now we just want to understand frequency separation. So we are going to open up the frequency separation group by clicking on the drop down icon. And we're going to come and select the low frequency layer. Remember, as you're trying to retouch the image, you're trying to blend or even out the transitions within the skin. So we want to first of all get a tool that is going to enable us blend the transitions within the skin tones or the skin color of this image. 
and that tool is going to be known as the mixer brush tool so you're just going to come under the brushes if i told you have a newer version of photoshop right click under the brushes and select the mixer brush tool then if i told you have an older version of photoshop you may find your mixer brush tool down here so you have to set it up first before you can apply it to the image so make sure the hardness is zero percent and make sure clean brush is also selected and make sure you select the option which says clean the brush after each and every stroke the weight is going to be nine percent the load of 75 the mix at 90 and the flow of 100 percent and make sure sample alias is not checked so by not checking this we mean the brush only has to be dealing and working with the colors in the low frequency but if at all you check this option it means that the brush is also going to be copying information from the high frequency layer and pasting them into the low frequency layer, which you don't want remember we are only dealing with the colors in the low frequency layer, and we don't want anything to do with the details in the high frequency that's why, that is why we have not checked or selected this option that says sample all layers so after you have set up the mixer brush tool make sure you hide the texture layers in order to see the uneven skin tone transitions within the image so how to use the mixer brush tool you simply left click and hold down and you drag the mixer brush tool but as you're using the mixer brush tool make sure you, to, you retouch the image at a distance and you don't zoom all the way in because when you do this you can't see the uneven skin tone transitions and you'll have so much work to do retouching the image so always look at the image at a distance and you retouch it at a reasonable distance and in this way you can see the uneven or inconsistencies within the skin tone transitions of the image so if at all you want to decrease or increase on the size of the mr brush tool you can use the open and close brackets on the keyboard and if at all your mr brush tool is showing a plus icon like this make sure that you press the caps lock key on the keyboard and that is going to enable you have it like i am having it right now so right now how to use the mr brush tool you left click and start dragging and if at all you want to mix a different area release the left click button on your mouse or your trackpad and now you can work on a different area so whichever area you have to release the left click button and you press it once again if at all you're mixing on a different area so basically what i'm going to do i'm just going to be retouching and you have to move the strokes of the missile brush to the way an area is shaped so let me first of all show you this so if at all i'm working on the file area i'm just going to left click and hold down and move my strokes in that kind of direction and the good thing about the technique of hiding the, the texture layers the more plastic it is looking with the texture layer hidden the better the results because right now you're going to be looking at the colors as they are really nicely blended in the image and the image may look like a wax painting but the more it is looking like a wax painting the better the results at the end of the retouching process so that is what you have to do basically so you can see that it is looking more like a wax painting but in this way the colors are looking seamless and they are transitioning quite well so you have to mix colors that are looking alike and while they are transitioning from one color to another just come and left click and mix that area so let me first of all show you by turning on the textures you can see textures are still there and you can see quick before and after for the error that we have just worked on in this tutorial so i'm just going to hide this and with the low frequency that's still selected i'm going to be working on the rest of the image and i'll see you because i have to add this i don't want this to be a long tutorial so let me just work on this and i'll see you shortly hello welcome back and you can see that i'm done using the mr brush tool and let me show you before and after for just retouching using the mr brush tool. you can see that the image now looks a little bit better but as you can notice that there are areas that i may miss out when i'm using the mr brush tool. that is why i have to use a second technique that is using the lasso tool so with the low frequency layer selected and this time around the texture layer still turned on select the lasso tool and now make sure it is in new selection mode the feathering is 22 pixels and alias is selected 
So what we have to do, we're just going to zoom in slightly and make a selection onto the skin area just like that. So come to filter and come to blur and come down to gush and blur. So when you come to gush and blur with our former radius that we applied when we are blurring out the textures from the image, we are simply going to take that radius up up to a point when we feel like we have a better and realistic skin texture for our image. So I'm just going to take it up. So at around 12, that is when I have a nice texture. But let me share a trick for you right here. So whichever radius that you may have used when you are separating the frequencies of the image, just multiply that radius by 3. So 4 by 3 is 12. So depending on the radius that you may have used for the image, just type in that value. So 4 times 3 is 12. I just type in 12 and simply hit OK. And you can see that we still have the same texture or same results like we had as we are moving the slider. So right click and apply the Gaussian blur if at all you want to apply it on a different area. So if at all it is too much for your liking, you can simply right click on the Gaussian blur selection, come to fade Gaussian blur and simply reduce on the Gaussian blur effect. So that is how to use our lasso tool. So to deselect, you can click away from the selection or you can go ahead and make another selection and the previous selection is going to automatically be uh, deactivated or that selection is going to be uh, deselected. So you can see that the image is now still having the textures intact. So you can see a quick before, after, before, after. So right now, that the next thing that we want to do is removing the blemishes. So in order to remove blemishes, remember, blemishes are part of the high frequency layer. So just come and select the high frequency layer and come and get the clone stamp tool and make sure the hardness is at 0%. Then the blend mode is normal, opacity and flat 100%. Make sure aligned is also checked and make sure sample is currently clear because you only want to deal with the blemishes that are part of the high frequency layer. So you're just going to zoom all the way in and start removing blemishes. So how to use a clone stamp tool to clean up or remove blemishes from the image. We reduce on the size of the clone stamp tool by using the open and close brackets on the keyboard and how to remove a blemish. Make sure that you sample or you copy skin that is close to the blemish and make sure that the clone stamp tool is slightly bigger than the blemish that you want to remove. So in order to copy clean skin, hold on the alternate key on the keyboard and left click on an area that is close to the blemish and release both the alternate or option key on the keyboard and simply left click over the blemish to eliminate it. So I'm just going to be doing this for all the blemishes and i'll forward this and i'll see you later on in this tutorial hello welcome back and now you can see that i'm done removing the blemishes and now the image looks recharge and it looks great so this is all for this story and if at all you have learned something new from this tutorial don't forget to like this video don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you have been watching and you're not subscribed yet to this channel running from honest photography thank you for watching i'll see you in yet more amazing trials and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating